What's up? Welcome to the Tabletop Nights. My name is Victor. Today we are playing Arkham Horror Under Dark Waves Expansion. The unboxing did really well, so I had to do a playthrough. We're doing the Pale Lantern scenario. I don't know if this is the first one you're meant to do, but this is the one I'm selecting. Um, you've got the board layout here. You've got the downtown merchant district and uptown, which are old tile maps. And then you've also got the central Kingsport, Kingsport Harbour, which are new maps. These two areas are not connected by any streets or anything. You actually have to take like a train or the streets to, to basically teleport. Um, you've also got the strange high house here. Um, please, if you see any mistakes, please let me know, especially for just normal Arkham Horror mistakes, because we want to play more Arkham Horror core game on Tabletop Simulator for live streams, um, and we're also doing Horror Month in October, so we're starting to record videos for Horror Month, so we're doing the Under Dark Ways expansion just because it just came out, and some of you guys really want to see it, so the Pale Lantern, the story so far... In the mist-shrouded town of Kingsport, the elite prosper within a newly founded social group called the Lantern Club. In the alleys and gutters, people once reported missing reappear. Be uh, it is bereft of their memories and mere shadows of their former selves. So the starting space is at the river docks. And um, every time we draw, I forget what it's exactly called, but one of these Mythos tokens, each investigator with Doom in their space suffers one horror unless they discard one focus. So focusing is going to be really important in this one. Um, we'll, we'll go straight into... We've got three codex already. We've got codex number 2, 76, and 87. 76 and 87 are part of the um, the add-on, the expansion. But uh, number 2 is a part of the core set of Arkham Horror. Um, we've also got Dowie Samaras and Carson Sinclair. They're new characters as well, so I'm pretty excited to play them. I'm not going to read through what they do, but their starting possessions are a uh, chef's knife for Zoe Samaris and $3, or she gets the Zoe's cross or the enchant weapon. So I've got Zoe's cross and the chef knife. They're one-handed weapons each, so I can sort of use them both when I'm doing um, things. Uh, we've got uh, Carson Sinclair, who's more of a sort of stronger character. Uh, he starts with Anticipation, $2, and I've also chosen uh, Prepared for Anything. So she has a really cool ability. They both do. That's why I probably chose them, to be honest. So she has Grace of St. George. After you defeat a monster, you may remove one Doom from your space or recover one health. So that's pretty good. After you defeat a monster with Elite, you become blessed. So becoming blessed is really helpful because you, if you roll a 4, 5, or a 6, then you um, succeed in your checks. Uh, Carson Sinclair, once per round, while an investigator in any space is performing a test, you may spend one focus token to allow them to re-roll one die. If you do, you recover one sanity. So basically, it'll be self-healing, at least on his sanity. Um... Zoe also has the Zoe's Cross, which has three health on it as well. So as soon as the three health goes in there, the card loses. So yeah, pretty exciting. So I'm just going to quickly check the travel routes because I've never played with them before. I haven't even done a test game of this. I've only done a test game of the normal Arkham Horror um, core game. So again, if you see any space, please let me know. Travel routes are single space tiles that allow investigators to move between the towns of Miskatonic um, River Valley. There are three types of travel routes. When moving voluntarily, whether as part of a move action or as part of another effect, an investigator in a travel route space may spend $1 to move from that space to another travel route. So basically, if I want to go from here to here, I have to spend a dollar. So it's basically just spending a movement point. So you spend a dollar to get there and you still actually have two movement points. Um, so we're going to be trying to manage pretty much everything at once. Uh, let's place the Doom. We've already got our monsters out, so we need to place some Doom tokens. Let's do that now. We've got one in St. Irmus's home. We've got one in the Hall School, which is very awesome art. We've got one in Hangman's Hill. Lots of Doom to begin with. We've got one in the Merchant District in the Unvisited Isle. And finally, we've got one in Downtown in the Independent Square. So lots to deal with early on. We'll read the codexes in a second. I'm pretty sure everything else is um, set up correctly. We're in the River Docks over here. 
So I don't really know what the, the, the point is. So let's read Anomaly. So this one again is a part of the core box. So people walk with their heads down, shoulders hunched. With each new oddity, it becomes harder to pretend that nothing is wrong. But the vanishings, the strange lights, the sightings of inhuman creatures, there is something that can't be ignored. At least, not for long. Okay. When a space has three doom or neighborhood has a total of five doom, place an anomaly in that neighborhood. So basically, as soon as there's three doom in one area or five in the whole neighborhood, an anomaly will spawn. If another doom token was to spawn in that area, instead of going in the area, it actually goes on the uh, encounter, uh, on the actual card here. So place the doom on the scenario sheet instead. If it resolve an encounter in the neighborhood, an anomaly, blah, blah, blah. Um, when enabled had zero doom, remove the anomaly from the neighborhood. So we don't want to put any on any uh, doom on here. I'm not sure when it'll turn bad, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, so we'll do the missing client, which is uh, codex number 76 now. A missing client. My friends tell me you can be trusted to handle unusual matters with discretion and a nod non-judgmental eye. I'm beginning to worry about my associates, in, my associates in the Lantern Club, the social club in Kingsport, MA. Please meet me near 341 River Street at 10pm on Tuesday the 8th. I fear I'm in great danger. Dolores Gadling. So uh, we're meeting her at River Street, which is we're at the River Docks. I'm assuming we're close by. As the clock strikes 12, the sinking in your stomach suggests that something dire has befallen your contact. If Dolores truly is in danger, you need to look into this Lantern Club and find her before it is too late. So when there are at least two or more clues on the scenario sheet, flip this card. When there is four or more Doom on the scenario sheet, add card 84 to the Codex and return this card to the archive. So we definitely want to be wanting to find some clues. So two or more clues. You can never have too many clues. We don't actually start with any clues though by the looks of it. No, we start with plenty of Doom and two monsters on the board. Um, and then we've got a Storm Rages. Codex number 87. God, it takes a long time to start the actual gameplay. A storm rages at the top of Kingsport Head. Although little more than a howl of the wind reaches the streets of the town below. The curious little house at the top of the rocky cliff is hidden beyond dark clouds and flashes of unusual lightning. It is far removed from the threat that faces you, but legend says that the old man who lives in that house shields Kingsport from ancient threats. Perhaps he needs someone to protect him this time. Place three doom on this card. Okay. After you pass a test as a uh, part of an encounter as the at the strange high house, which is over here, replace one doom token on this card with a clue token. So once there's the reckoning token from the mythos card, remove one doom from this card. Uh, then if there is no doom on this card, flip it. So I definitely want to replace one doom token on this card with a clue token. So I'm going to want to head over there. So let's put three doom over on this card here. So place three doom tokens on this card. After you pass a test as part of an encounter at the strange high house. Um, so I have to land there, do an encounter at the strange high house. If I pass the test there, I replace one dune token on this card with a clue token. Whenever the reckoning happens, remove one dune from this card. If there is no doom on this card, flip it. So I basically want to get as much clues as I can on this card, I'm assuming, before the reckoning happens. So I've got to sort of suss out what is most important. But there's no, no, there's no clues to begin with. So I'm going to have to draw them out of the Mythos Cup. Because normally, I mean, in other scenarios you play, there's clues sort of hovering around. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, the starting space is River Dock. So that means that's where the monsters will be heading if they go towards um, that space. At least I'm pretty sure I don't have to draw one from this deck yet. As you can see, there's a million decks, so we'll try not to screw anything up. All right, um, for over here, monsters that I'm engaged with will go on the left of the board, and all the items will go under and to the right, um, as well as the Mythos Cup, which I'll lay out here as I draw them out. I can't see what they are as I draw them out, so no cheating. Cool. I think it's time to start. So let me quickly read what their items do. After you perform a focus action, you may focus one additional skill for each clue in your neighborhood. So that's good. Once per round, uh, when an investigator in any space suffers any amount of damage or horror um, in any space, okay, 
You may discard one focus token to prevent that damage or horror. So this guy's going to be trying to get as much focus as you can. Then Zoe's cross is after you become engaged with a monster, you may deal one damage to this item to test, uh, what is it? It's uh, will. Deal damage to that monster equal to the test result. So that's a really good one. And ch chef's knife, I said chef's knife. Chef's nice knife. You get plus two strength as a part of an attack action. After you re-roll a die while resolving a test, add one to the result of that die. Excellent. And again, she's got her defeating enemies, and after you defeat an enemy, and this guy can negate damage. Oh no, when another investigator is performing a test, he can remove one of his uh, focus tokens. So I'm definitely going to want to uh, start making my way over here. And I'll try to get some doom going while I can. I'll uh, I'll go with with her first. She's going to go one two, and she'll spend her dollar straight away. Unfortunately, to go to the train station. So that's three. So she can't do anything else. So I'm assuming I'm going to need money, but I might focus something first. I will focus. Uh, I'll focus my observation just in case because it's quite low. So I will focus my observation. Now, I could actually spend another dollar to move some of it. I, I won't do that for now. Um, now, old mate's going to go. He's going to do the same thing, I think. One, two. And he's going to spend his dollar to go three. Now, it's going to be really important to focus for him as well. So he will do a focus of... Let's go law. Let's focus law because I definitely want to be able to ward as much as I can. So that's a pretty average first turn, to be honest. Um, I really want to make it to the Strange High House to, to do Codex number 87. And I want to start finding some clues as well. So fingers crossed. All right, so now we do the monster phase, which is each ready monster activates. They're already all activated. Uh, this guy's going to move too, so he'll go first. Relentless uh, Hunter moves towards and engages the lowest influence. So they're both in the same spot. So he'll just go one and two and move there. And uh, so I'm assuming our monsters can go through the streets and stuff. I, I do remember that. So this guy will move towards most doom, engage the lowest strength. So the most doom, he's technically already tie for the most doom so i'd assume he just stays there that's where the most doom is he doesn't go towards an enemy he goes towards the most doom i believe let's he's patrolling so move towards the most doom engage the loss let's see if there's something in the room uh, in the rule book for patrolling uh there is not a new patrolling it's pursuit relentless or retaliate that we need to keep an eye on that are new new keywords all right cool um now we do the Mythos Cup. So uh, the girl will go first and draw two. Zoe will go first and draw two. One, two. And then the guy will draw two. One, two. So we'll do it in, in order from top to bottom. Uh, okay, so we spawn a Doom. God, I always forget exactly what we do. I'm pretty sure I draw the back card and we spawn a Doom there. But I'll just double check because it's uh, been a few days since I played. Yep, sp uh, spread Doom. Spread one Doom by discarding the bottom card of the event deck face up and placing one Doom token in the location of that card marked with a Doom icon. The more Doom that builds a little cool. So we f take the bottom card. Now this card is the um, the active area and we spawn a Doom at the TikTok club in the Merchant District. So Doom at the TikTok club. So I'm going to have to go back there and uh, start clearing that out. Uh, then we have a spawn monster. So we take one from the bottom. And he will spawn at the nearest street, uh, the street nearest the leader. So um, technically I'm not in a street. They're not counted as streets. So he will spawn here. Uh, cool. Excellent. Now we do another doom. So is that downtown this time? So it's unfortunately in that sort of direction. So we've got one at Independence Square. So that's two over there. So that's getting quite dangerous. And then we uh, drew a blank. So that's the first four that we've done. That is Poo Poo. So I actually have to elect a leader as well. So let me grab one of the tokens. Yeah, I'll just use this as the leader. That way we know. I don't know where the, the, torch, the torch token is. 
I'm sure it's somewhere, but we'll just use that. So she's the leader. Let's make her the leader. She seems like she'd be more of a leader. Like this guy wants to be the leader, but she's more dominant. So excellent. Um, that's the first round done. We've done the. Oh, we haven't done the encounter. So we're meant to do the encounter first and then the mythos. So my mistake. So we'll both do an encounter for um, the railway. So um, she'll go first. Travel routes. All right. It is the uh, train platform. The only tickets available at the moment are for a shared compartment. You may move one space or move to another train platform. If you do, you try to engage the stranger sharing a room in a meaningful conversation. So um, you may move one space. So I will actually move that space. Uh, not that it really matters, but I'll, I'll move here, I guess. Because I'm going to be going through them towards the... Um, the enemies anyway, uh, yeah, towards the strange house. So, but I will actually try to, if you do, try to engage a stranger sharing your room in meaningful conversation. If you pass, you make a new friend gain one ally. So I need to test influence, which I don't have a lot of. I've only got two dice for influence. I will try to roll here as, as best as we can. So it's a fail. So, but I can, it might be worth using this to try to, because getting an ally nice and early would be nice. So I might... Use this to re-roll one dice, one die, a die. Let's see. I need again. I need a five or a six. So we got a five. So that is that is good. Um, so you can use those. I'm pretty sure you can use those tokens to re-roll uh, any test. I believe. So I gain one ally. So I will draw an ally. So I thought that would be worth the try because allies early are really good. So. Um, she has an action, so an investigator or ally in your space recovers one sanity. So you're an investigator in your space. So I have an ally now and has two health and two sanity. So I can put a little bit more damage onto uh, him. All right, that is him done, uh, her done. Try Time for him at the train platform. It's good, we're seeing the train platform um, nice and heavy this round. For once, the train actually leaves on time. You may move one space or move to another train platform. If you do, the train hits a large beast on the way and the crew needs to help to push the freakish body off the track. So again, I will um, I will move because they're about to both engage her, I believe. Yeah, so I will move and I'll get him going towards the strange house. Okay, so I'm going to test the strength, which this guy isn't very uh, strong, unfortunately. Zoe's my my stronger my stronger of the two. Okay. Okay, so I passed. I got a five. Lucky. Alright, if I pass, you collect a fang, gain one remnant. You collect a fang. Gain one remnant. So that's that is it. I don't gain a fang item, I just gain a remnant. So I'll put my remnant over here. So that we can see he has one remnant. Uh cool. So that is a another success. So that actually should go. That's right. I'll shuffle them later anyway. Um, cool. Really good. For not a bad first turn. At least I got it to move a little bit as well. So that was beneficial. And then we do the Mythos Cup. Everything's one, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Excellent. We'll do it correct next turn. This is going to be a long video. All right. Let's go straight to it. So she's going to actually engage with these two here. Boop, she goes in, uh, and so she's going to actually battle both of these people. So, uh, after this monster attacks, you become delayed. After this monster becomes engaged with you, test that, negative one. If you pass, defeated. If you fail, you suffer one damage. So, now it's come. Uh, now I'm engaged with it, so I, uh, I um, test my influence, but I only get one dice because it's negative one. So, we'll see how we go. So it's a two, so I fail. So I take one damage. Um, so again, I've got Zobby's Cross. After you become engaged with a monster, you may deal one damage to this item. So I won't do it on that. Uh, an investigator ally in your space recovers one sanity. So I'll put that on, on her because she's got two health. So I don't want to deal another one to her, but I want to spread it out. Um, so I'm engaged with both of these people. Then I'm going to use Zobby's Cross which is after you become engaged with the monster, you may deal one damage to this item to test my will, which is four. Deal damage to that monster equal to your test result. So I'll gain one damage because I want to just smash through these guys as early as possible. 
And I am rolling four dice. Now, my guy also has once per round while an investigator is in any space performing a test. You may spend one focus token to allow... Cool. So I can regain a sanity if I want them to re-roll a die. So we'll roll over here. Cool. So I only hit for one, and I was doing it on the left guy. They both got one anyway, so... Uh, he's actually dead. After this monster attacks, you become delayed, relentless. This monster cannot be exhausted and it can only be damaged by an investigator in its space. So this guy's actually dead. Uh, it's not an elite monster or anything like that, I don't believe. So it just goes to the top of the deck. So that wasn't an action using that card. That was just using the card. So now I actually get my second action, which will be to attack the other monster. And it, take, it does a negative one for attack. But you get plus two attack uh, strength as a part of an attack action. After you re-roll a die with resolving a test, um, add one to the roll of that die. So I get to roll two, unfortunately. Oh no, four, because I get my plus two for the item. So it would normally be five, but he does negative one, so I get four. That is a almost perfect successful roll of three hits. And he is definitely dead. He's not an elite monster or anything. Um, perfect. So that's fine. He's gone. So again, her ability is after you defeat a monster, you may remove one doom from your space or recover one health. So I will recover. I'm assuming I can recover the health off my allies and stuff. So I'll recover the health off, off Zoe's cross. Um, because it's all me. It's all me. So I'll recover one health. So that worked out. So technically I, I, I killed two. So I get to gain two back. Right? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I killed two. I get to gain, gain two back. I'm happy with that. Let me know in the comments. Hopefully, I'm doing it right, but we'll see. And thank you for tuning in, by the way. I We appreciate the views here at Tabletop Nights. Again, Horror Month coming in October. We've, we're going to do um, Betrayal on House of the Hill. We're going to do Arkham Horror. We've got a few other games lined up, so we'll probably be releasing uh, one video a week. Cool. That's her turn. She's taking care of both the monsters. Now it's this guy's turn. He's going to try to go for the strange house, I think. So he's going to go one, two. Oh, it's going to be quite expensive for me to get there. So I might have to just... Um, I don't want to spend... I can't actually get there this turn. So I might just... Instead of doing that, I might just ward. Do a ward action. So Because I've got my plus one, it's three dice. So I might just try to ward while I'm here. That's a success. So that is warded off. Uh, and that's his turn. Pretty lackluster. Cool. Now it's the monster's turn, of which they... So he goes towards the most doom, so again, he's going to stay put. Um, and then it is the encounter phase, so we'll do it properly this time. So she'll go for a street, because she's now in a street, and she is in a scenic area. A tremendous old apple tree leans over the gravel road. It slims heavy with round red fruit. You help yourself to a particularly fine-looking apple. You are an ally recovers two health. After a few bites, it's clear the apple is a little shy of ripe, and its tartness makes your lips pucker, but you finish it anyway. So you're an ally gain two health. So that isn't going to work because I've already done that, but at least it's not something negative. So not too bad. All right, so um, old mate Carson will draw one from Kingsport Harbour. Here we go here. At St. Ermus's house. Excellent. You've heard that a resident left... Wait. You've heard that a resident left behind a sea chest filled with gold, but no one will touch it for the fear of dark ma magic. You ask Granny Orn about the chest. So we've got to test influence, which I'm decent in. So again, I can spend my lore to try again. So I've got two fives, so that's a success. If you pass, the, uh, she gives you a key and says you're welcome to anything you find. Gain four dollars. So that's really good. So I'll gain four ones. I don't like the, the fives in this, in this game because I find that you constantly spend it. So that's two, three, and four. So that's really good, having money early on. Excellent. Um, so if I was fail, I was to get tainted. So that's not what you want. So we'll put this back under there. And that's how you do it. Cool. That, well, that was okay. Now we do the Mythos Cup, the hardest part of the game. So we'll do uh, her first. One, two. So not too bad, although the articles are generally bad. And one and two. Cool. So we've got a blank. We've got um, one headline. So we'll do... 
her headline first. Add this card to the codex and discard all other rumor headlines. So there are no other rumor headlines. Each investigator's health is reduced by one. So four and five. So that really sucks. Um, during the reckoning, any investigator may suffer three damage to discard this card. So that is quite awful. So I told you they're usually quite bad. Now let's uh, draw another one. Headline, you roll one die. Let's, uh, you suffer the total amount of damage and or horror equal to the die result. <laughs> Excellent. You choose how to split the die between result between damage and horror. So I could roll a six and be really screwed here. So this is the first time I'll actually ever want to roll a one in this game. Three, so not, not too bad. So this is on the guy. Um, so I'll, I'll do the... Uh, I'll do Sanity because he's quite Sanity. He can heal a decent amount of Sanity and he just lost one house. So that was two extraordinarily bad headlines. So I'll get him to suffer... Um, actually, I'll get him to suffer two Sanity and one health. So that is rough. That is really rough. That is the most poo-poo one... I've ever drawn in my life, I think. Two in a row. Uh, and then we have our next. So we don't have any clues, uh, unfortunately, which sucks. Then we get a horror as well. So it's downtown in La Bella Luna. So I'm really going to have to make my way back there, actually. So La Bella Luna gets a horror. So two more away in that area, and we're screwed. Absolutely screwed. Excellent. Uh that's it. That's the Mythos done. New round. So that was really rough. That was really rough. So I'm tempted to go back. Yeah, I'll start making my way back up to uh, the downtown area, I think, with one of them. So with him, he's just going to go one, two. And then he's going to focus. He doesn't need any money. He doesn't need to ward. Uh, he doesn't need to do attack, evade, research, or trade. So he's just going to focus something. And I'll get him to focus his strength because that's quite low. And he has a focus limit of three. And again, I'm going to be discarding these um, to try to uh, recover some of this damage that I just took. So again, uh, once per round, when investigating any spaces performing tests, you may spend one focus token to allow them to reroll one die. If you do, recover one sanity and he's got two of those. After you perform a focus action, you may uh, focus one additional skill for each clue in your neighborhood. So that is not good. Once per round, when an investigator in any space suffers any amount of damage or horror, you may discard one focus token to prevent that damage and horror. So I wonder if he counts as a... Um, when an investigator... So he would... It counts as him. So I might actually get rid of this law token that I got before and discard all of these. Because I didn't see that card. So once per round, when an investigator in any space suffers any amount of damage or horror, you may discard one focus token to prevent that damage or horror. So, or horror. So again, I would have gained three horror. And okay, we're backtracking a little bit, but new characters, new cards. So I know to do that in, in uh, you know, in the future. So... Cool, he's in a strange house. He just focused his strength. Now she's going to go one, two. She's going to spend a dollar to travel over to there. It's quite expensive. I can spend another dollar to go another step. No, nah, I'll uh, I'll stay where I am and I'll just I'll do an event in that little area. There's no point going to... Actually, hmm, for more brains. What's the brain... Oh, for, to recover sanity. Okay, I'll just stay there. That seems a bit more likely to have benefits for me. Um, of course, that means I can uh, focus. So I will focus with her, absolutely. Or I can gain a dollar. I might actually gain a dollar because she's quite broke. There we go. Fingers crossed I'm playing right. I do love this game the way I'm playing it now, and it seems quite balanced, so uh, fingers crossed. All right, so now we do the monster phase. Um... Excellent, we'll do a monster phase. So he's just going to stay there again because he goes towards the most doom. Yep, and then he engages the lowest strength. So we'll engage him next turn. 
uh, and then it is the encounter phase. So uh, Zoe can get a travel route at the country road. After driving over a large stone, you hear a loud crack. When you examine the vehicle, you see the axle is broken. Suffer one damage from the long, exhausting walk unless you spend one dollar to hire a truck to tow you to your destination. Either way, move one space or move to another country road. So we'll spend the dollar that we just gained because we're already low on the health uh, with four and um, and five over here. So we'll spend the dollar. And I get to move one space. So, not that it matters, but we'll just move a one forward. Um, we'll do the Mythos Cup now. Alright. So, two, two of hers. One, two. So, we get a clue finally. And two of his. A clue and a blank. So, this is pretty balanced. You get a clue and then you get the um, gate burst, which is always awful. So, we'll do the clue first. So, we... Uh, get a clue in downtown, which is where I currently am. So that's pretty beneficial. And then we grab the top two cards and this card and we give it the best sort of shuffle we can without knowing which one it is. I sort of just close my eyes and think about uh, something else. I, I, still, I still sort of know which one it is. So we'll just... There we go. Now I have no idea. Cool. Excellent. So that's a clue in downtown. Then we do the gate burst. So we get the gate burst from the front, which is Kingsport Harbour. So that's actually not a bad gate burst. That's probably one of the better spots it could have gone. So a gate burst, we go like this. Gate bursts are awful generally, but this one is manageable. One, two, three, go one, two, and three. And now we get the discarded cards and the one that I just drew. And we shuffle them. And then we place them on the bottom of the event deck, like so. Excellent. And now I think the um, the main space is back to the river docks because there's no card here now. I believe that's how that works. Um, and the uh, oh, Mythos Cup, we get another clue. So one, there is now one in Kingsport Harbour which is really good again because I'm sort of close by and I'll be managing the Doom after I do the Strange House for a few turns. Uh, so Kingsport Harbour, we get the top two of those and we do the shuffle. I Yeah, I honestly have no idea. This is the worst part is the shuffling the three because you feel like you have... <laughs> it's hard to not place mm -hmm. it where you want it, but I'm generally... I don't like cheating or making things easier apart from the little backtrack I did earlier. All right, that's the clue done. And then we got a blank. So that was a pretty positive Mythos Cup, actually. Um, how many more tokens do we have in there? We've only got two. So I know which two they are, sort of. So one of them's the Reckoning. So I might have a turn to um, do the Reckoning sort of phase. Uh, now we do the... Uh, actually, before the Mythos Cup, sorry, we're meant to do the Encounter phase. So we'll do the Encounter phase now. Let's do the Strange House first. Strange High House. Excellent. While you rest at the warm uh, hearth in the house atop Kingsport Rock, a gust of cold wind slams the heavy door open and snuffs out the fire. Spawn one clue. You suddenly feel particularly vulnerable in this cold and drafty house. You may rush to close the door or attempt to relight the fire. Okay, so I will probably close the door first. There's no point relighting the fire um until the doors close so we'll go for close the door but um a gust of cold wind slams the door and spawn one clue and suddenly feel particular uh, where do i spawn the one clue do i spawn it in anywhere i want i'm i'm gonna say we'll spawn the clue in the kingsport harbor so that happens regardless of if I successfully close the door or not. So we'll do that first. Again, I actually don't know. So please put the the um, verify what your thoughts are in the comments because that is interesting. So it says spawn one clue. You suddenly feel particularly vulnerable in the cold house. There's no point spawning the clue here because there'll be actually no way to get it because there's no way I can put um, a clue card in the strange high house because there's no clue cards tied to that, I don't believe. So... Yeah, let, let me have a quick look at the deck to see if there's any... Yeah, there's no clue cards or anything, so 
So we'll spawn one in the King's um, Harbour. Oh, but then I've got to get a... Do I have to fish out a Kingsport Harbour card from this deck to put another clue in? It's very confusing. Spawn one clue. So maybe I just get the clue. Let's just do it that way because I don't want to fish through this deck for another Kingsport Harbour card because um, then I have to shuffle them all over again. So spawn one clue. So maybe I'll just get it. So we'll play it like that, I guess, um, which is a bit weird. Spawn one clue. You suddenly feel cold, so I will close the door. You run to close the door and feel something pushing against the old scarred wood. Strength. Okay, let's do my strength, which I now have three because I focused earlier. So one success is all I need. And I got three. <laughs> so a bit of overkill there. If you pass, you force the door closed and drop the heavy iron bar, preventing the beast from reaching your world. Remove one doom in any space if you fail heavy black limb. So I successfully did that. And I get to remove one doom in any space. I'm trying to think where... So she's going to be managing it over there okay. So I might get rid of one doom over here. Just to help me manage this area for now. So that was okay. And then we'll do one in the Arkham Asylum. Batman uh, ripoff there. No, okay, let's do one. I could be a clue. It is the actual clue. So that's really, really positive. So staff and patients alike lie on the floor in a deep sleep. A strange odor lingers in the air. I've got to use my observation, which is a roll of one. So this is poo poo. So I can actually spend my focus on this guy to have a better chance. So let's, it's a one. So now I roll the one. So once per round while investigating any spaces before me test, you may spend one focus token to allow them to re-roll one die. So I will actually do that because I want to try to get this clue. And I know it's a, you know, Low chance of me actually rolling this, 33% chance, but uh, I've got to try. Another one, so I've got snake eyes. So I, I fail that one. Um, if you fail, you fall unconscious and hit your head, suffer two damage. Suffer two damage? That is ridiculous. Okay, that is harsh. So I'll put one on her and one there because I don't want to take any damage because I'm about to go into battle. All right, that sucks. So now we uh, we take this card and we shuffle it back in with the top three, I believe. That really sucked. At least I'm not, you know, messed up this round or anything. Okay, cool. Then we did the Mythos phase. Everything's back to normal. Well, technically, that card wouldn't have been in there, but because uh, it was negative towards me, we'll play it. So that card, so I should have done the encounter first, and I probably wouldn't have gotten a clue card. So it, I'll happily take the two damage as a punishment for getting the rules wrong, silly boy. And so how hard is it to do it in order? Just gotta focus. I just gotta do the cards. I get excited with the mythos. I like the I like the mythos cup. Okay, excellent. Now we go back to the turns i guess so she's going to go first and she's going to encounter the swooping scavenger oh he's quite strong so after this monster attacks you disengage other monsters and both you and it moves directly to a space with the most doom so it has three health this thing and i will attack it immediately so it gets gives me negative one but i'm going to use my chef knife Uh, we'll do this. We'll do this first before I do the zombies cross. So we'll do this. Uh, it's an attack of four. I've got to hit it three times. I hit it twice, so that's actually not too bad. So it now has two damage on it. Um, now this is that was one-handed weapon. So now I use my other one-handed weapon. After you become engaged with a monster, you may deal one damage to this item to test my brain, my big brain. So I will. Put another damage on this to test my will, which is my strongest ability, which is four dice again. So I only need one success and it'll die. Uh, so I did actually get the success. So very close battle that was. So this monster is actually dead. Um, does this count as an elite monster? But How do I know if something's elite? So it's not an elite monster, but I do get a remnant for defeating it. Like 
that, a bit more currency. Um, and then uh, that's her turn done. I don't see anything else she can do. I'm, I'm quite low on the items. Uh, but after you defeat a monster, you may remove one Doom from your space or recover one health. Um, so I'm quite confident I'll be able to manage that Doom. So I'll recover one health from my Zobby's Cross because I don't want to lose that because it's quite powerful, actually. Um, excellent, that's her turn done. I'm tempted to stay stay at the Strange High House. And I, actually, I forgot, I actually succeeded doing that. So after you pass the test as part of an account at the Strange High House, replace one Doom token on this card with a Clue token. So that is um, what I've done there. I'm going to stay here. So I might just uh, do two actions. So I'm going to focus my strength. Actually, I'll focus my law because I might need law. Um, and then I'll also gain a dollar, I guess. Yeah, there's no... I mean, I could always research my clue. I might actually research the clue. Let's do that because I got this magical clue or something. So um, I get to research. So I get to t test my observation, which is three. Well, actually, after you perform a focus action, you may focus one additional skill for each clue in your neighborhood. Now, remember it said that this is considered in this neighborhood and there's one clue there. So I can actually focus another skill of which I will get strength. So I'll take it. All right, so I didn't roll uh, successfully, but I don't want to spend anything to, to try again. Um, I'll try again later. All right, cool. Now we do the monster phase, of which there are none. They're all dead. I've killed every single one of them because I'm legendary. And then we do the encounter cards. Can't forget that. So we'll do one in downtown first. All right, so this isn't a clue card in Independence Square. You sit with a soother, soothsayer, Anna Caslau, and she teaches you to cast runes to predict your future. You hold a question in your mind as you select from uh, runes from a bag. So... Uh, testing my will, of which I have four, so that's quite a good chance there. I managed to roll one, uh, which is good. If you pass, you see your path to success. You become blessed. Excellent. So blessed is probably one of the best things you can become in this game. So basically, when resolving a test, four, fives, and sixes count as success. After you fail a test, you discard this card. So that's really good. So now fours count, so I have a higher chance of doing everything. Um... Yeah, blessed. So I'm now blessed. Oh. Put that under. Now it's his turn to resolve. And he is in the strange high house. So he'll grab one. The woman on the path with you tells you all about the things she saw in the town below. Spawn one clue. So again, where do I spawn the clue? Do I spawn them on the strange high house? I would have to. Otherwise, this is quite powerful. So spawning a clue. Anytime an effect spawns a clue, so that is an effect, I would say, resolve the effect the same way you would resolve a spawn clue mythos token. Take the top card of the event deck, place a clue in the indicated neighborhood and shuffle the card into the top of that neighborhood deck. So I've spawned two clues. It doesn't have to be in this neighborhood. So I'm reading this in the rule book towards the back. It's not with the rest of the stuff. Downtown. So downtown will now get another clue. Just got to make sure the other clue's in there to make sure it's um, fair. Okay, so now there's another clue in downtown. So, again, this has been a little bit confusing, but uh, we're getting there. Uh, Central Kingsport. So another clue goes into Central King... Uh, first clue goes into Central Kingsport. Which I love the art of the Central Kings board. It's really nice. I mean, all the arts in this game is quite... In all these games are quite nice. A little bit copy and paste sometimes, but... Uh, so, okay, I'm confident that that's... I'm confident that's how we do it. It says spawn one clue. So that, that makes sense. That actually makes sense now. All right. Do the rest of the card. As you climb, you're both hurried and shadowy creatures swooping out of the dark nights. You may attempt to fight the beasts or shield the woman with your own uh, body while she gets to safety. Well, I don't want to take any damage, so I'm not shielding. I'm just going to fight the beasts and see if that works. Um, let's see. Uh, with a shout, you attempt to startle the um, night gaunts and force them to flee. So I've got to test my strength, which is a roll of three. Okay. 
Nice, it's a success. If you pass, you land one solid blow, um, and they take wing to fight, find easier prey. Remove one doom from any space. If you fail, so I'll remove another doom from here. Beautiful. And uh, that's it. I don't get any items or anything. So that was pretty good. Um, and because I've resolved an effect, this gets flipped over. So not too bad. So when this... Um, when this card has no doom on it, we flip it when a reckoning happens, which a reckoning is about to happen. So we'll draw both of hers, which is monster and reckoning. We'll put these in and we'll give them a shuffle and we'll draw two more for him. Let's try and get them out. There we go. One and two. So, okay. We've got four different things. So first we spawn a monster. We'll take from the bottom of the deck. The swift biaki. Uh, spawn at the most doom, which is up here, which is fine. I don't mind battling with her. Um, yeah, I don't mind battling with her. She's pretty pretty badass. Uh, so that's the monster done. Then we do the reckoning token. Uh, there's one, two, three things we do with reckoning. So each investigator with doom in their space suffers one horror unless they discard one focus. So uh, she can take a horror. That's not a problem. put it on Zora, and uh, he doesn't have to because he doesn't have any Doom in his space. Excellent. Uh, then we do remove one Doom from this card, then flip if there is no Doom on... Uh, and then if there's no Doom on this card, flip it. So this token gets discarded, and we've got two clues, so we'll flip that in a second. Um, and then any investigator may suffer three damage to discard this card. So I will actually do that. So instead of... Taking, so I'll take the three damage, but then I get to use my prepared for anything card, which is once per round when an investigator in any space suffers any amount of damage or horror, you may discard one focus to prevent that damage or horror. So I'll discard my um, my strength token. So this card is now gone, thankfully. That makes sense, right? I haven't used that card in this round, so that makes sense to me doing that. Um, so that is the that card but we'll flip this card first and read what's on this side the storm subsides and you can see a clear blue light beckoning you from the top of the cliff though the people around you claim they cannot see it you know an ally awaits you at the strange high house in the mist do you dare delay your investigation into the Lantern Club long enough to help them? For each clue on this card, place a focus token of your choice on this card, then discard those clues. So, focus of my choice. So, I'll get uh, these two. After Investigator resolves an encounter at the Strange High House, they may choose and test the skill. If they pass, they may place focus matching that skill on this card. Wait, what? After an investigator resolves an encounter at the strange high house, they may choose and test a skill. If they pass, they may place a focus token matching that skill on this card. When this card has three or more different focus tokens on it, add card 88 to the codex, then return this card to this... Um, to this co to the codex, so this is actually really interesting, really interesting because, I, because I already had the two clues on uh, the two clues on here. I get both the strength and the observation. Next turn, if I pass, I can use my will. Once I use the will on here, I get to add card eighty eight to the codex. So that's a bit of story progression there, and not a big uh, amount of risk. So we'll keep doing that. We'll keep chipping away at that to see what happens. Now we get a newspaper article. Test Brain. So this one is uh, his. So this is his one. Uh, test Brain and resolve the effect based on the test result. So his will is decently strong. So we'll do this. Excellent. So I rolled two. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so one to two. You gain $3 and become cursed. <laughs> that, uh, I mean, I'll take the money, but uh, the curse really blows. I'm going to have to try to get rid of that. As soon as I can. So, again, curse means that uh, after uh, while resolving a test, only sixes count as successes. But after I pass a test, I get to decide the card. So as soon as I roll a six, that card is gone. Excellent. So that was pretty... Oh, that was not too bad. At least I got the money. So I'm going to have to try to start spending something. So that's not too bad. Uh, then we spawn a clue. 
So in the uptown area, we'll get a clue. So there's clues all over the board. Now, Alright, so Uptown now has a clue in there, and this monster is actually engaged. They're happily engaged now. Uh, excellent. Mythos Cup done. Encounter phase done. We got a new Codex card, which is very exciting. Let's get into turn two, shall we? Uh, so Old Mate's going to do the same thing. He's going to, and again, I had the clue on me before, and I researched it, so I lost I lost a turn basically, uh, in action. But we're, we're we'll, we'll happily take um, a bit of negative for not knowing the rules. I don't mind making myself a little worse off because I got a rule wrong. So um, I will actually ward another skill, and I will ward. Uh, what am I about to test? I'm about to test my will, so I'll get a will token. And again, uh, after you perform a focus action, you may focus one additional skill for each coin in your neighborhood. And again, this is a part of this neighborhood. So I will uh, get a... Let's get a strength. So that's his max focus limit. He has three tokens. That's all he can focus for now. Uh, cool. Um, and then... So that's one action, and then I'll just gain a dollar as another action. I'm quite rich, because there's not much else I can do, because I want to stay in this area. Now it's her turn, so she's going to go straight into an attack, but first I'm going to use Zoe's Cross. So after you defeat this monster as part of an attack action, you may disengage all monsters and move up to three spaces, so that's fine. So we'll do the Zoe's Cross first. Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll use it, because I might if I, if I get lucky and kill... It. I'll still have two actions left, so it's uh, quite worth it. So we'll um, spend a dollar, and I get to test my will, which is four. So I didn't quite kill it, but I hit it for one, which makes my neck, my actual attack, um, a little high. Gives it a little bit more of a chance to to kill it. So I still haven't used an action. Now I'm going to use my strength, which is an attack of five. Uh, after you re-roll a die with resolving. While resolving a test, you add a result to die. So I'm actually blessed as well. So I'm not sure if I rolled a four. I don't think so. But now I'm I'm blessed. So I get to roll fours, fives, and sixes. All right. So we've got oh, we've got a four and a five. So that's because I'm blessed. Uh, it's another two damage. So this guy's actually dead. He's not an elite monster. So, but I do get a remnant from that battle. So that's not too bad. I got double remnants now. I need to get a space where remnants are valuable. So that monster is now dead. Excellent. Thank you very much. That was a decent little battle there. She's quite she's quite strong. I like her. Um, then we will uh, ward. She's going to do a ward action. So that's uh, three dice. So if I get if I get both of these, and again I'm blessed. Um, so four, fives, and sixes can all. I get a remnant if I get rid of both of them. So I only get rid of one. That's fine. It's better than nothing. I've watered it away. Excellent. So that's not too bad. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, they're the, both the actions. Now we do the monsters, which there are none. And then we do the encounter phase. So we'll do hers first because she's got a pretty good uh, chance at a clue in downtown. Uh, I didn't get it. So I'm just going to double check to make sure I put them right. So there should be two... Oh, there are. There are. So I'm just making sure I put them in the right deck and all that. Um, so, excellent independent square. You must allow me to read your future. Insist the fortune teller Anna Caslow. She flips several tarot cards as you sit. The darkness that falls over Arkham is watching you closely. Be ready to act. Seize any opportunity. She gives you a card to keep as a talisman. You gain Ace of Rods. So I'm actually not sure where Ace of Rods is. It, if it, it might be in this orange deck here. Here we go. So it is a Curio. When you spend a focus to re-roll a die, you may re-roll any number of die instead. So that's actually pretty good considering it, it was free as well. So that'll go there. That's another item for her. We'll put that up there. Um, excellent. Uh, now he'll go. 
and he'll do one at the strange high house. So I really need to succeed in this one. So again, um, after investigator resolves an encounter at the strange high house, so resolves, I think, I think a resolve means you finish it, whether it's a win or a lose. Um, they may choose and test a skill. If they pass, they may place a focus token matching that skill on this card. Cool. So, from outside the house, you see William Bane through an old and warped window, speaking to a woman concealed by a dark hood. Spawn one clue. So, again, we'll do the spawn one clue. So, Kingsport Harbour, which is where I'm at now. And that gets a clue. There we go. Uh, you you may attempt to ser uh, surreptitiously listen in on the conversation or knock on the glass and get their attention. I'm just going to knock on the glass. I don't want to be dodgy. Like, I'm in some other dude's house. Like, area. I don't want to be dodgy. So, I'm just going to knock on the glass and give them an old fright, I think. God, it's hard to keep all these, desks, all these decks nice and clean and neat. All right, knock on the glass. Um, at your knock, the woman locks her golden eyes upon you and bids you speak. So I get to test my influence, which is three. But I'm cursed, so only sixes count. So that is no good. Um, do I want to spend once per round while investing in any spaces before my test? You may spend one dice... Hmm. Okay, well, I guess I'll just fail. So, again, in order to do Beacon on the Rock, all I have to do is um, resolve an encounter. So, I don't think ro resolve means effect. Like, what's the actual definition of resolve? Uh, resolve meaning a form of resolution. So, maybe it is a... You have to resolve it, so be successful. So, I will actually use um, one of these... I'll use my strength one to re-roll one die. So I need to get a six. Four. That sucks. I'll spend my law to roll another one. One in six chance. Come on, baby. That's a one. So we're not we're gonna we're gonna fail this one, okay? Um if you fail, the woman hisses in an unknown tongue and your mind growls grows cloudy before she vanishes, become cursed. So I'm already cursed. So that was a failure and that's a waste of a whole turn. Excellent. Now we do the Mythos Cup. Nothing's really happened the last few turns and we're already an hour in the video. So nothing's actually happened at all. So they're hers and these are his here. Okay, so not, not too bad. All right, we'll do... These have all been negative so far. Test handshake. So these are hers. So test test influence. So already negative here. Uh, but I got fours, fives, and sixes because I'm blessed. So four and five. So excellent. One to two. You gain one ally and place one doom in your space. So doom, but I also get an ally, which is awesome. Excellent. So you get plus two as a part of a ward action. So that can, that's come at a that's come great timing there for me. Um, so that was hers. And then we will spawn Doom. Hopefully, it's not in Independent Square. Otherwise, we're in trouble. It's not. Uh, it is in TikTok Club. I'm going to have to make my way down there to make sure that doesn't get messed up. And then we've got a blank for him and a Doom for him. So, we'll draw a Doom from the bottom. And it is in uh, Downtown, not in Independent Square. It's in Independent Square. So, this is bad. Uh, so... Three happens. Um, when a space has three doom, place an, anom an anomaly in that field. So this is now all messed up. Anomalies. That sucks poo -poos. All right. Excellent. So that was awful. No, awful Mythos Cup. But at least I've got an ally. So I'll be warding away all my problems. Uh, that's it. I've done the encounter, I've done the mythos, let's do an action phase. Um, but we're going to end it for now, uh, and we'll get into part two very soon. So thank you very much for watching again. Um, if you've seen any mistakes, let me know. But I'm going to go straight into recording part two. I just don't want the videos to be 
too long, so I'll do a few parts of this scenario. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll catch you on the next time, guys. I'll see you on another time. Thank you. Bye.